The radio might be seen as a dying form of media today, especially when our cell phones can make contacts in seconds. But what happens when service goes down during times of emergency? That's where radio shines. Yeah. There's no short of stories to be shared in the world of radio. It's a big, huge community out here. And a ham radio is how this group from the Yellowstone Radio Club prefers to communicate. Basically, we're going to send a signal through the air. It's going to bounce off of certain parts of the atmosphere and come back down, and we'll talk to someone on the other end. The group is participating in Field Day, where people worldwide communicate for 24 hours through ham radio. Kilo 7, Echo, Foxtrot Alpha. From noon Saturday to noon Sunday, the group will be at Zoo Montana testing their equipment to make as many contacts as possible, both through digital and Morse code. The more contacts, the more points their club receives. It's an emergency exercise, that's what we kind of get bonus points for um, and credit for, but it's also a contest, so there's a there's points, you can, the, more, the more stations you talk to on the air, the, the more points you get and the more points you get, the bragging rights you get for beating all the other clubs in the state of Montana. In times of disaster, you can count on the radio to stand strong. The object is to go out into the field on emergency power in adverse conditions and operate the radios. Uh, it gives us good practice for uh, emergencies that we do get called out for each year. What might seem like old-fashioned technology is actually a lot more complicated than one might expect. And I'm sending a CQ which says, uh, you know, I'm calling anybody I want to talk to. And just now I get a call coming in from N1MG. He's over in Minnesota. I can tell by the, the grid call that, he, uh, that, he, that he's from. And so he's, uh, his computer talks to my computer and they exchange signal reports. And for the club's president, John McCabe, radio is more than just communication. The radio, to me, I needed something that I could remember my father from. Now, his call sign, K7IKC, he got that in uh, somewhere around 1948. And he passed away a few years ago, but before he did, I studied like crazy and got my license. So I am the second person to be authorized to use K7IKC on the, on the airwaves. It's a shared interest that brings waves of people together. You make friends out there and you don't even know the person and you'll never see them the rest of your life. You'll never see them at all. Your whole lifetime, you don't know who they are. But you know the call sign. It's just that kind of a thing. Signing out in Billings, Isabel Swartz, MTN News.